plane or anything, right? Prosperity man, it is not true to make you happy. So what are we studying? If the very basis of our study is not right, <coughs> That's what we are saying, the whole concept of development, right? The whole concept of education is based on this presumption that if you have more physical facility, you will become happier. Right? And that is how you are trying to maintain the continuity of happiness. Right? This very presumption, is it right or is it not right? Pass anywhere, you keep complaining that what is this government doing? It is not able to repair even this patch. <laughs> <laughs> so all your happiness is gone, you know. You thought it's good that you know the road is so nice. Now this patch is a little problem for you. Right? So every time you keep thinking of the patch. Okay. So all this will happen. So this contradiction cannot be resolved by the government. Then there are other issues related to it. The issue of environment, right? The issue of consumption of natural resources, right? Then you are not having that oil here, so you have to, you know, import it. Then there is the issue of foreign exchange, right? Now so many issues related to it. But for me, the fundamental issue is that it is not going to achieve what you want to achieve. Despite all those other things, you know, you take care, you know, somehow you can procure oil and this vehicle and you provide it, them to every, you know, uh, uh, person in the you know, public, right? Allow them all seven days, all 24 hours to drive, right? With all that, you are not going to make them happy. All those problems apart, right? I am not taking it in terms of those problems. What is normally talked about is in terms of those problems, right? The problem of environment, the problem of invention of natural resource, you know, the problem of, you know, traffic congestion, the problem of, you know, foreign exchange, right? importing therefore foreign exchange. All those problems I am not talking about, in fact. For me, they are very secondary. The pro primary problem is that you are not able to achieve the goal which you are on to, even if you do all that. Can I make a comment on this? <coughs> the, when we were discussing on the, uh, the issue of Patterson Bay and then related issues, I think we began from uh, very long ago that uh, building a lot of physical facilities and then it's not only uh, Bhutan and India but the whole 7 billion people in the world have now became so used to with these physical uh, facilities that it is now the, they have become so attached to it and I don't know whether the question is now asking in my mind that is it really possible to go back to our, you know, without all these facilities going back. So this is one question that I is pondering in me. And uh, whether we have these facilities or not, but it is to do with the inner self. Even if there are facilities, if we don't cling to it, if we are not attached to it, the, I think the, we can still, the happiness can still prevail irrespective of having the facilities or not. But it is the matter of the attachment to it, being attached to it. I, uh, it is now difficult to 
rewind or move backward. So the, it is now is difficult I and mean, it's not practical. So we, I think sometimes I feel that we have to move forward now. We have to move forward. But then we have to take care of self. Take care of ourselves, our values. At the same time, having the history is like yesterday we discussed about the wealth, position, strength, we have been giving respective to these, you know. It's because that we have given too much of attachment on this. But if, if we know that, that we are being attached to this, so attachment is not good. But having facilities rare doesn't uh, really uh, affect. But it's the attachment that you have clinging uh, onto these positions well, but actually the position itself did not do anything bad to us. But it is us who has made this, uh, attached to this position. So that's why this problem is coming back to our mind. So likewise, I think uh, on the Pedestrian Day, all these things. So the question that we have to ask is that can we really go back? And how practical it is now? I think these are issues that we need to uh, introspect, deliberate further. That's good. See, what we are saying is not, not recommending that you go back. Okay. What we are recommending is that you go forward. And what is the meaning of going forward? The meaning is that you thought that this is all which is valuable for you. So you have done a lot of work on this. There are a lot of achievements, fine, okay. but this is not sufficient. This is what is happening. Right? The physical facility alone is not ensuring continuity of happiness and prosperity. Then what do we do? We are not suggesting that you just get rid of all physical facility. What we are suggesting that now you work for right understanding and right feeling. With that, you will be able to make right use of physical facility. <coughs> what is happening is, without this right understanding and right feeling, right, there is no possibility of happiness in human being, number one. Number two, without this right understanding and right feeling, there is no possibility of even feeling prosperity. Do you know? This prosperity can also not be felt without right understanding and right feeling, right? In regard of how much physical facility you go on accumulating. So I'm not saying don't have physical facility. I'm saying it's good, you know, science and technology has facilitated, right, for us to have many physical facility which were needed, right, for the body or for right utilization of the body, you know, for right nurturing, protection and right utilization of the body. And that is all that you need physical facility for. Okay. So, if it is made available, it is very good. We must thank to, you know, science, technology and all our efforts, you know, that we have done in the past as regard this physical facility. So, it is good. So, I am not asking that you go backward. I am saying that now that these physical facilities are available, Right. Is it enough, sufficient to make a human being happy and trustworthy? Is it making human being happy and trustworthy? Is it ensuring the continuity of happiness and prosperity? The answer is no. Right. So even in places you know, which are supposed, supposed to be the most developed right? and who are consuming 15 times more than what we are consuming, right? There, more people are suffering from the problem of depression, you know, and the problem of suicide and all this. Right? In fact, I mentioned in between that, you know, these countries which have maximum per capita income have the maximum suicide rate. At one time, America had the maximum suicide rate. Now, Punjab, Japan has the maximum suicide rate. So, this is not enough, that's the problem. Okay. 
If you think this is enough, fine, go ahead. Then happiness and prosperity. And distribute to everybody. But that is not happening. Right? Why it is not happening? Is because that we have to further work on right understanding and right feeling. For example, I say, you know, with a lot of physical facilities developed, at least now there is a school, you know, in every village, okay. every town. So there is a possibility of education and sanskar, you know, to reach to every child. So that's good. Okay. But then what are we going to what are we going to give in the name of education and sanskar? It is still open. There we have to do development, right? So we have to go forward. Right? Decide on what is going to be the content of education and sanskar for the human being. What is going to be the process of education and sanskar for the human being? And that is what we are talking about. So just to have school building is not enough. Just to have some whiteboards and blackboards and you know L C D projectors, right? And very comfortable, you know, air conditioned rooms is not enough. What is required is to understand what is going to be this education and sanskar for the human being. That forwardness is required. So I must understand what is the right education and sanskar for human being. How it can be delivered to every child. Right? What is going to be the process. All this we have to, you know, work further. So we are saying, this we have done something, but this alone is not enough. We have to do something for this and something for this. So it is going forward. It is not going backward. So we are not saying don't use vehicles. Use them. Make right utilization of the vehicle. But do it with right understanding and right feeling. If you don't have the right understanding and right feeling, any amount of vehicle will not make you happy, will not make others happy. It will not even make you prosperous. Right? It may tend to you know, make you deprived and make others deprived. And this is what is happening, right? Getting Maruti 800 at one time was supposed to be a big achievement. Right? Today, if you are going with an Aruti 800, you feel so low. Why? Because bigger cars have come. <laughs> now this bigger car has made more deprivation or more prosperity. <laughs> now all this has to be... Even you know, traveling by a luxurious car, you still feel deprived. And? Even now, now even uh, traveling by a luxury Land cruiser, you still feel deprived. Oh, I, need to go. I now need to go by a private jet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's interesting, you know, you are feeling deprived and you are making that 800 Maruti 800 fellow also deprived. <laughs> so the key, uh, the, so the key, the fact, key factor is not to get attached to the, the uh, positions not get attached to these physical facilities. That is what the, I think, right understanding is. Uh, not to uh, you know, really get attached or cling to that. I think this is... This is you see, uh, this we'll have to see. You know, with right understanding, I will be able to make the right evaluation. Right? Attachment means over-evaluation. Detachment means under-evaluation. Right? What we have to do is the right utilization. Right utilization on the basis of right evaluation. Uh. So, <coughs> the thing is not the problem. I must know what it is. I must know what is the role of it in human existence, right? And the overall existence, you know, in the nature and existence. And then I must make sure that it is used for that purpose, for that role. So that understanding is required. If that understanding is not there, then first we think that we can do everything with this. So this is over-evaluation. That leads to attachment. Then we feel, try with this and it doesn't work. So we think it is not worth anything. Right? That is aversion. Okay. This is under-evaluation. 
So we will make the right evaluation of it. And therefore ensure the right utilization of it. That is what has to be done. Again, further it is coming back to the self. Yes, yes, it will come back. Because, uh, <laughs> or whatever that we discussed, because the pillar is the self. That is the foundation. And it's always coming back to the self. <laughs> and then self itself is a you know attachment. When you have an attachment, and then, then you feel that it's a real strong uh, I is existence. And then when itself, uh, the, when you hold on to the I very strongly attached, when you have an ego, then the desire comes, uh, you know, from there. So, so whatever the discussions that so far we take this, is always coming back to the existence and non-existence of the self. So that's, I think, where again uh, is coming back again and again. But uh, leaving this existence, coexistence, as a basis for your deliberation here, and then if you move forward with the discussions, then I think uh, yeah, it, it is comfortable uh, for me to listen. But coming back to the self, uh, then, uh, um, again, then, then again and again, <laughs> Who is getting uncomfortable or comfortable? Who is getting comfortable and uncomfortable? Yes, because uh, when you fail to understand the self, then you feel uh, uh, uncomfortable. Because so the here we are uh, assuming the self as an existence. And then we are assuming so strongly that self is existence. Therefore, you are talking about the happiness. Therefore, you are talking about the right feelings. Therefore, you are talking about the thoughts, expectations, desires. Without really deeply understanding the nature of the self, uh, then when we discuss on the, it's like a river source. Without stopping at the source, and understanding so. If you work on the primary, you know, tertiary, the downstream, so it really doesn't bring much of a sense. This is what I feel, but then it doesn't mean that, I, as I have said, that all the uh, findings that we have made, it is towards building a good human being. It does bring, but when it comes to the existence of the self and all, but assuming that the self is existing, it is continuous like that, then everything goes fine. But the whole concept of all this is standing on the basis of the self. And then when this self falls down, all this will fall down. This is what I feel. I mean, uh, very sorry to say because we have the right to express our own opinions. And then I think we have to uh, clarify all these things. And then uh, should go uh, this is serving as a proposal from your side and then it should be a proposal so that the self-exploration is very, very important. And when Ganesh Ji is all talking about the self-awareness all the time, that makes a lot of sense, as I have said. That is okay. So leaving that as a, uh, leaving the self and the body as a coexistence at a illusory uh, level, then I think so. Yes. Yes. On the uh, second day of the discussion in the smaller group, uh, you know, I shared a story, it's a two-line story only. Uh, you know, my understanding on that story is uh, really becoming more brighter and brighter as the sessions are going on. Uh, the story is that uh, Like, uh, even uh, yesterday in the third session I told, you know, about the give respect and uh, take respect. It's changing now because everybody is better. <coughs> so the story is very simple, you know, once an ordinary person goes to Lord Buddha and the ordinary person says, Hey Lord, I want to, I want happiness. Now I'm repeating this story, I want happiness. The Lord, Say, 
the first thing you do is remove I. I guess the now I am understood the story. Lord Buddha wanted to say first you remove the over evaluation. Ego. Then what will left? The the gentleman replied, want happiness. Then the Lord said, okay, remove want. And that want was, I guess, nothing but, uh, you know, the uh, what we are we have discussed about, not finding actual needs of a human being. And if you if you have more than something needs, then it becomes a desire. So those desires is want. So you remove I, you remove want. Now what is that? The happiness. It's already there beginning. So I shared this story in this small forum. So I thought that you know because my understanding of this story is becoming more you know clear every as, as the sessions are going. Education time, we have to carry everything for ourselves. 
we construct our hearts and we cook for ourselves for four years. For two years my mommy used to cook for me. Because I was not able to cook. And we went through these uh, problems during our education time. Then our understanding was that, okay, why should my children suffer? That kind of, that kind of understanding, those things. So we didn't realize that it was sensational and precondition because we were not able to evaluate your capacity by yourself. And the result that I got through that was quite happy. I am living by this attachment with Ashishera. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I respect your opinion. <laughs> yeah, it is important you know, that uh, my God. <coughs> it is important that you know, uh, this whole thing goes through education and sanskar and teaches to every one of us. And we do it in two parts. We are saying first we have to educate the parents and the teachers because they are the ones who are going to pass it on to the next generation. So first we have to work with the teachers and the parents. And then we have to make it a part of education. Once the parents and the teachers are ready. Okay. So when the teachers are ready and the parents are willing to you know, give this kind of education and sanskar to their children, then it has to become a part of education. And you see, you go through this process, all these changes are very natural to come. It's not that you are doing something very great. Okay. Many of these things, you know, we have been doing it in India from 2005, very systematically in the colleges. Many of these changes have taken place very naturally. I cite a few examples. Like one, and this we started in 2011 in Punjab. In one year time, okay, many of the feedbacks have come from the students. And when you look at those feedbacks, you will feel that you know what they were doing it was so much out of way. You know. And now they have a little feel of it. Okay. Things have started changing. Like one student from Chandigarh, you know, the college, he was telling you know in one of his feedback. And less than a semester. So he was saying that, you know, I used to go to Chandigarh. And this college is some um, 60 kilometers. 60 kilometers from Chandigarh. I used to go to Chandigarh every month to get my hair, you know, uh, whatever you call it. Cut and set and cut and set and <laughs> colored. <laughs> he used to get his hair colored after setting and everything. Mm. This was costing him six thousand rupees. But then you have to become exclusive and get respect out of that. <laughs> Every month he has to go 60 kilometers, get his hair set, you know, and color, and then come back. He said, going through this course, I came to realize that this respect cannot be you know, obtained through this kind of thing. So now I am getting my hair cut locally, paying 350 rupees. Now this 350 is more, okay? <laughs> but at least it has, you know, he has been able to see that the 6,000 rupees of hair cut, okay, is not necessary. And he doesn't have to travel all the way 60 kilometers to Chandigarh and, you know, <coughs> get the hair set. Now, this is, from my perspective, is not a very big achievement, okay. But it is coming up naturally. That now we are able to realize that many of these physical facilities, we are not even making right utilization. Another example, you know, one of the students in Aligarh, he, when he was asked to come and tell everybody what he has understood in this course, the teacher was trying to see whether they are paying attention, understanding it or not. So he came, you know, and he said, I can uh, uh, give you an example of what I have understood from this course. So he said that I am wearing this shoe which I bought for 300 rupees. Right? And 
I think that it is an, you know, good enough for protecting my you know, legs, okay. my feet. And if I would have not done, gone through this course, I would have bought you know, a shoe at least costing 1500 rupees, branded shoe or 